Ladies and gentlemen, we have Aisha Bo. She is a former NASA rocket scientist and current CEO of STEM board. Set to make history as the first African American woman to fly into space with Blue Origin. An influential figure of the STEM field, she is recognized by Inc. 5000 as a leader of one of America's fastest growing companies. She also founded a coding kit called Lingo, which is for students. She has made significant contributions to space exploration and education, and her inspiring journey from community college to space has been shared globally, including through the documentary In Her Element. Please welcome Aisha Bow to the red carpet. So Aisha, let's start off first with asking, why do you think it's so important for leaders to be here at the International Leadership Summit? I think it's essential to be in communities where you can learn knowledge. Earlier today, I had the privilege of speaking on a panel about AI and its impact in the minority community. And not only did I get to share the experiences that I had as an entrepreneur, but some of the challenges that I've had as a person of color just trying to get the sink to recognize me when I wash my hands. Mm -hmm. And so we learned a lot today. People were able to share, they were able to grow, and they were exposed to the very same things that they need in order to determine what they want to do with their career. Thank you. Dr. Nikki Ziegler, she's with HBCU Magazine. Well, oh, hey. 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 Thank you for coming today. We're so delighted to have you. Um, my question to you is connecting your organization to our HBCUs. What does your future look like connecting to our HBCUs? I think the future with us and the HBCUs is in the word expansion. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud to say that the Lingo Coding Kit has been taught at Bowie State University for the last two years for Compression and Computer Science. And we're looking at working with MC A&T and other universities are even helping as I go to space and we're looking to apply some of the experiments. And so what I really want to leave you with is that I would like to do more work with HBCUs, and so if they can hear this and if they can hear me, hit me up on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. We have the Activation Hour with Melissa D. White. Hello, I'd like to know what advice do you have for educators and teachers to prepare students who are interested in STEM or how to incorporate more AI in the classroom as well? going to be enhanced in some way by AI in the next five years. And so I want to step away from using the word STEM and I want to talk about employable skills, I want to talk about workforce development, and I want to talk about joy and excitement. And the joy for me comes to taking students to the actual environments where STEM or these employable skills are happening. I have never had a student visit me at NASA or even on my job today and tell me that they left feeling uninspired. We've got to connect the learners with the actual environment and also visible, culturally relevant role models. I challenge anybody to get out there and share your story. I started my degrees in aerospace engineering with pre-algebra and community college after graduating from high school with a 2.313. I own that. I'm excited by that because it is a way to show that it's not where you start, mm. it's how you finish. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. highlighting that at that point in time in my life, it wasn't that I couldn't learn, it was that I didn't find people who taught me in the way that I could learn. And that's what AI brings. AI is gonna become the personal learning coach, and it's going to allow for people to have an, a buddy, in addition to their educator, that can help refine how they're being taught to help for better academic outcomes. Thank you. ASGE News with Andy Smith. Andy Smith. My question is uh, kind of personal. I want to know, with working with the DOD and NASA, uh, how do you balance that with your home life? And does it ever become overwhelming? What advice would you give to those who may feel overwhelmed in their work? I think it's important to be aligned with your sole purpose. I don't often feel tired other than momentary instances of like, hey, maybe I need to get more than three or four hours of sleep. And the reason for that is this is what I feel like I was set on earth to do. And I see the reflection every day and the impact that the work
growth that myself and my company is having. I'll tell you a quick story. I was recently at an event where I was talking about the fact that space is now for all and not for some. And there's a woman who came up to me after the conversation. She said, you know, my five-year-old daughter's been asking me to buy her a spacesuit on Amazon for the last year. And I kept telling her that she should maybe think about being a doctor or a lawyer. But now I'm going to go home and I'm going to buy her that spacesuit because if you're going to space, she can too. Mm -hmm. And having those experiences, it's hard to come home and feel empty. It's hard to come home and say, you know, I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. I really find ways to rest, re-energize, and get out there and interact with people because I want others to have the same enjoyment out of their careers that I have in mine. Getting your own podcast with Toya and Monique. Yes. Ooh. You guys, I love my job. <laughs> I'm trying to make it concise. It is so, it is so fun. I get to wear a onesie at work sometimes. <laughs> it's like the best. If you haven't been in a onesie lately other than Christmas, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Hi, Aisha. Um, you went from a 2.3 GPA to becoming a trailblazer in STEM and a rocket scientist. Kudos. Could you share with us how your experience has shaped your view and the true essence of success yep. and why being an overachiever, quote unquote, might, be the, might not be the ultimate goal when striving to be a leader? The thing I want people to take away from my life is I overcame a circumstance that I thought was going to bury me. Mm -hmm. And I was able to put that in perspective. When I think about high school, I did not decide to study aerospace until I was 18 and I was in community college. Mm -hmm. I decided to escape to a fantasy land of faith and confidence in myself to only realize that the fantasy was real. Mm -hmm. And so I don't ask that people become aerospace engineers. What I ask is that you have faith in yourself and you realize that sometimes the things that you think are setbacks mm -hmm. are really the setup to a comeback. Uh -huh. And you have to position that appropriately. When it comes to technology and AI and part of what we were talking about on the panel today, mm -hmm. what I want people to understand is that had I had some of the tools that were available today, I think I would have been planning to be president of the galaxy by now. I would have been able to do so much more mm -hmm. because I would have been able to have a tool that could say, you know what, Aisha, your GPA doesn't define you, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're asking people to determine what it is they want to do before they know who they are. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's problematic. Yeah. So Two, good. we're using memorization and regurgitation to yep. grade your skills and your aptitude. Mm -hmm. That's not, I mean, yes, I'm an aerospace engineer, but I'm running a business that I don't have a business degree to run. Yeah. I am successful in something that I've never really seen anybody else do, and I'm going to space on a commercial mission where there's not a template for doing that, mm -hmm. right? So all of this is about eliminating boundaries and barriers. Each year I wake up and I'm like, what am I going to do this year that's going to surprise me that I thought that I couldn't do? Mm -hmm. One year it's climbing Kilimanjaro. One year it's making Inc. 5000 list. And this year, it's challenging what people think about when they think about minorities or women, people in space, yeah. all of it, right? I want us to revisit why we think we can't when we can. So good. Thank you. Any other questions? The other questions are? Of course. I'm going to stand right here, though. OK. My question to you. <laughs> 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 my question to you, um, and this is Dr. Nikki, publisher of HBCU. My question to you, what will you tell your younger self now? If you was to look back, oh my God. What will you tell your younger self now? I would tell my younger self to be myself, the world will adjust. Mm. Oh, I struggled so much growing up because I thought I had to be somebody else, I right? Know, I wanted to be Barbie. Yeah. I, I wish I had the career again, right? <laughs> I, I wanted things that were not me. I wanted to be everything but me. Mm -hmm. And the more that I allowed myself to be comfortable being me, the perception of me shifted, not only internally, but externally. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that I remained the quirky, independent mm -hmm. person that I've always been, because now I'm seeing that I'm being regarded as a trailblazer. You know, next week I'm going to try not to cry because I'm receiving a Black Enterprise Luminary Award. Oh. A luminary award yeah. for someone who didn't even think they were going to graduate from college. For someone whose parents, and shout out to my parents, uh, you know, I love y'all, but uh, we've had this conversation when I decided that I was going to study aerospace, they were like, what? 
<laughs> are you, wait, are you sure? There was no NASA in Michigan. And two, it was like, well, is that safe? Are you gonna succeed? Are you gonna be able to eat? And even after I had graduated from university and I had gotten the prestigious degree and I was in the job, I decided that I was gonna step out of faith and start a business and my mom was not a fan. Love her, but she and I didn't really talk for about three months because she thought that I was making a mistake. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it was that I, I knew that there was more in me than she could see at the time, mm -hmm. which is why I say you gotta be yourself and let the world adjust. Love her, you know. So my mom, my mom, and the funny thing about my mom is my mom is employee of the month, every month of my second business. <laughs> she is, so, you know, I, so I created this coding kit called Lingo, and this for me is a personal mission because do you know how many people do not learn from black women or women, period, technical subjects mm -hmm. in high school? So they don't think we exist, right? They get out of the college workforce, whatever, they don't think we exist. And so I created a box that is a self-paced coding kit that is fun. So I'm a serial plant killer. I kill bamboo, whatever. Mm -hmm. Plants come to my place to die. <laughs> and in the kit, an example is we have a temperature and humidity sensor that teaches you how to make sure that your plants are healthy. She has the kit. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> and it all started because I wanted for people to get access to these topics at their home without the need of having a teacher, a parent, or some instructor to help them do it. And so when I decided to start, start the second business, she was like, I'm gonna help you, boo. And she shipped, hand-packed, nearly 10,000 of those kids. Like my mom touched that right there. Mm -hmm. wow. And so that's the thing, right? Like you start and you think, okay, I'm gonna change my life, but you end up changing the lives of people around mm -hmm. you. You inspire your elders, people get involved, and all of a sudden, like my mom is, uh, my mom is the reason why I'm here. We were at a conference and she starts talking to someone who supports Bishop Jiggs and she's like, well, I've had a meeting and I think that you should take, uh, take a call. Let's do a sidebar. And the next thing I know, I'm speaking here. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that is like the extended version of it, but it's really important to have confidence and have faith even if you can't see the outcome. Mm -hmm. Can we see the kit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this is the intro box. And what I love about this, because I spent a lot of my life being work, <laughs> this, <kit, laughs> this kit is seventy four ninety nine, and you can do multiple lessons with it. So Bowie State, shout out to them. This is what their freshmen get. And then from here, they're able to move on to lessons that talk about artificial intelligence, that talk about cybersecurity, the plant lesson, which I love. And we even partner with NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace to create a box that mimics some of the sensory responses that you need to manage a NASCAR race, which was fun. That was the first box that had an, a real life driver and an athlete on a STEM product. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about where this goes. Like I'm envisioning the future of this is like Wheaties for STEM on a box. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, absolutely. But you can, so one of the things that I learned that I thought was really fascinating is that it takes about approximately 100 hours of exposure to a technical subject before you decide to declare. We constitute those 100 hours. Wow. So yeah. you get this, you wow. get an activity every month, or you get it and your teacher can teach it in the school, and the next thing you know, you can study a STEM subject, which I will call an employable skill. Mm -hmm. wow. Yes. Okay, last question. Yes, so hello, I'm Dr. Margarita Johnson with Highlight Humanity TV. So how does it feel to have shattered through so many glass ceilings and broken through so many barriers to go down in history, or as I say, her story, as the first African-American woman to fly to space with blue orange? Can I put this down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, sorry. I am thrilled. I am excited. I pray that the things that I'm working on can meet the moment, but I'm here to tell you that it is not enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The numbers, mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. I am proud to contribute to advancing yeah. the needle, I will become the seventh black woman to go into space. Mm -hmm. In the history of space, there's roughly about 700 people that have went. Mm -hmm. Approximately 100 are women. Talking to me, the seventh, yeah. right? Slated to be the seventh black woman. Yeah. 
The question that I have is how can I use my platform to inspire others right. to decide that they want to embark on this journey? Because we need people to go not only out of the orbit, but to the moon and to Mars yeah. and to other places. And yeah. so I don't really, I don't have the words to describe the idea that I hope that the story will be taught long after I've left. What I have is a call to action for people to help support the legacy. And so I've created first, I started an endowment at my community college where people can study uh, technical degrees for two years for free. Okay. I'm working on an endowment for uh, aerospace engineering for women of color at the University of Michigan, finishing the ink on that. And I'm looking to raise a fund to support people of color in exploring space. And then also to connect with employers because we know that genius is equally distributed, but opportunity is not. Mm -hmm. So how can I take my role here and bring other genius to the table and help employ that genius and support that genius in becoming role models for the future? That's awesome. Thank That's you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Amazing.